I'm going to go ahead and get started um, and uh, welcome everyone from wherever you are in the world. Uh, a lot of people in North America, Europe. I know it's maybe a little bit early over in India, but uh, we try and make these webinars so that we kind of have access to most of the people in different time zones. Uh, so thank you for coming and attending uh, early or late, however, however it is at your place in your time zone. Um, okay, I'm going to share my screen here because I got a couple things to do first. Um, and then we'll we'll hand it over back to you there, Gary. So you want me to stop sharing? Yeah, there we go. Well, I, I can just take over the screen there. All good. All right, Coolio. Um, so hey, everyone. Uh, official welcome to uh, today's webinar. Um, our special guest from Down Under, Gary Pai. He's actually below me on my screen. I'm, maybe he's on the side on your screen. But uh, um, so yeah, Gary's going to be talking to us today about uh, rigging with Cartoon Animator 5. I'll let him do most of the introduction a little bit later on, but you can see my screen here. If you're signed up for this webinar, you're probably familiar with the outline, so I won't get into too much detail on this. Um, and you can kind of explore it on your own time. And we are recording this webinar as well. We're live streaming it on YouTube and we are recording it. So if you miss some, something, you want to step away for a coffee or something, uh, come back. Don't worry. Uh, we're recording it. We're going to put it on YouTube and you can review it later. All right. And uh, we, as always, we're going to have a Q&A session at the end of today's webinar. So any questions, uh, we're going to be answering those at the end of uh, Gary's live demo. So we won't be answering questions like during the live demo. You can put stuff in the chat, but uh, Gary's only going to be answering questions at the end of his live demo, which will be about 50 or 50 minutes, an hour into the, uh, the webinar of, uh, today here. And we'll get to that a little bit later on. And as always, we're sending out a survey. So if you guys have any comments, any suggestions for future webinars, please fill out that survey and get the 10% discount for the content store. And today we also have a very special promotion. Um, all of Gary Pye's content in the content store, we're going to be sending out a coupon for uh, for Gary's stuff in the content store, 40% off. So if you want to uh, get some Gary uh, Pye content action, this is the uh, time and the place to do it. We'll uh, send out that coupon after today's webinar. Again, that's 40% off um, all of Gary's stuff on the content store. And there is a lot of it. So I recommend uh, checking that out, taking advantage of that coupon. Um, a couple of other promotional things we have to go through here. Um, we are going to be starting our uh, Animation at Work contest for Cartoon Animator 5. That's going to be starting next month here in June. Um, keep your eye open on the website and on our YouTube channel for this. Uh, Animation at Work, we have this contest every year for Cartoon Animator 5. Some really big uh, prizes. Highly recommend, uh, you know, throwing your hat into the ring here and trying to get some stuff uh, submitted for this Animation at Work contest. Uh, it's going to be fierce. A fierce competition this year. There's like PlayStations. Uh, last year, there's PlayStation 5s and uh, like $2,000 prizes and all kinds of crazy stuff for uh, for giveaway. Um, so I'm not sure what's exactly going to be on this year, but there's going to be a lot of cool stuff, I'm sure. Um, so you can check out this. I'm going to throw this link in the chat window if you guys want to take a little preview on your own time here. Shabam, there we go. And uh, yeah. That's our first preview video. We just uh, launched this uh, a few days ago. Uh, so check that out and keep your eyes peeled for uh, new stuff uh, coming up. And for those of you who are students or teachers, um, uh, just a reminder, friendly reminder here, you can uh, qualify for a 60% off discount um, for all Reillusion software. Um, so if you go to this website here, our Global Training Center, I'm gonna throw this link in the chat window as well. And you can apply with a student ID, teacher ID, anything like that. Um, check this out, um, get the student discount, uh, educational discount, and uh, lots of other uh, fun stuff to look at on this page here uh, for in terms of training, uh, free semester, yada, yada. I won't go into too much detail on this because I want to save more time for the live demo in just a bit here. Um, as well, we have a newly launched um, education page for Cartoon Animator 5. So this is going to be a page where we kind of have an aggregate of uh, training content uh, training stuff for Cartoon Animator 5. I highly recommend checking out this page as well. It's focused specifically on Cartoon Animator 5. So if you want to learn, you want to get some lesson plans, you want to um, you know, do some stuff uh, to learn more about Cartoon Animator 5, um, please check out this page. There's lots of showcases and you can see more about the uh, community uh, schools and colleges around the world that are using our software. And uh, yeah, I can check that out on your own time. I put that in the link there as well. 
And as always, we have our content store, our software store discounts here. You can see we have the Mid-May Madness, level up, boost your productivity. Um, so here's your discount right now. Um, buy two plus, get 40% off your list price. Um, you can learn more about this just by going to the con our software store. And if you want to go to the software store, of course, you just go to the main Reillusion page, stores, and software store, content store, educational licensing, which is what I just kind of showed you guys, and Marketplace and Actor Core. You can get lots of other content. Actor Core is all for animations and characters, which can also be used. A lot of them can be used for uh, cartoon animated characters as well. So make sure you check that out. Um, and uh, finally, in the content store, we have uh, basically something going on here. This, this is more, uh, more information on the mid-made madness here. So buy two, get 40% off. Um, take a look at this. I'll throw this link in the chat window. This is the final link I'm going to give you guys. Um, so check this out. Um, if you're looking to get some more content, always take advantage, always take advantage of the latest and newest offers uh, on, a, uh, on our site here. All right. A lot of stuff to go through there. I think I basically covered it all. Did I miss anything, Gary? Oh, all good. Yeah? All good. All right. I think then that uh, that is my part done. I'm, I'm the kind of like the promo, the hype guy. I'm like, here's Gary Pye. Here's Gary Pye. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the hype man here. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think um, if you want to, if you're ready to go, uh, hey. you're, you're raring to go there. If you want to take over here, you can, uh, yeah, go ahead, steal the screen, and uh, there's a live demo. Okay, there's my screen shared. All right, let me just move this around, and we'll get started. G'day, my name is Gary Pye, and welcome to our webinar on how to rig a G3 character for Cartoon Animator 5. Cartoon Animator 5 is the fastest, easiest, and frankly, the most fun way of making 2D animation. When you wanna add a character to a Cartoon Animator 5 project, there are a number of different options that you have. You can choose from any one of the built-in characters that come with the software, and there's plenty of those. You can purchase characters from the 2D marketplace that are created by our talented content developers, and there are hundreds and hundreds of those, or you can make your own characters. And today I'm going to teach you, where are we? Today I'm going to teach you how to rig your own G3 SVG actor for Cartoon Animator 5. Now, before I get started, I wanna give you my disclaimer. I don't claim that my process is the only process. I don't even claim that my process is the best or the easiest. But what I do claim is that my process works. I've got currently over 450 actors in the 2D marketplace. So I kind of know what I'm doing. And I've written a tutorial, a written tutorial that goes into great detail about step-by-step -step how to rig a G3 character for Cartoon Animator 5. And we're going to make that available at the end of this webinar. So what I want you to do is to watch today's webinar, then go away and read the tutorial and then come back and watch the webinar again. And I think you'll find that everything will start to fall into place. The way to approach today's webinar is with an open mind. Because today, if today's your first day of attempting to rig a G3 character, if you're brand new to this, then you're gonna see all the processes that are involved. You're gonna see all the files and folders and your head's gonna spin and you're gonna think, I'm not gonna get the hang of this. Trust me, I know that's the case because when I started this process and I looked at all the files and folders that were involved, my head spun and I thought, I'm never gonna get the hang of this. But I did, and you will too. The purpose of today's webinar is to not only show you some of the tips and tricks of how to build and rig a G3 character, but also to point out some of the pitfalls and some of the mistakes that are easy to make when you very first start out. Because once you know how to avoid those, you can save yourself hours of headaches. In honesty, there's really only two things you need to keep in mind when you're making a character. And that is name, every, name everything correctly and check your spelling. Because they're the two things that Cartoon Animator 5 is really looking for the most. 
Coral Draw is the software that I use for creating my characters. Now you might use different software and that's perfectly fine. You'll find that a lot of the processes that I'm gonna show you are very similar, if not exactly the same. And if you get stuck, all you need to do is send me an email and I'll try and hook you up with somebody who uses the same software as you and they can help you out. Or make sure that you join the Cartoon Animator Users Facebook group where we have over 4,000 Cartoon Animator users and developers and animators that are available 24 hours a day who will answer your questions pretty much in real time. Now, today we're gonna to be using my character, Anita. Anita is available in the 2D marketplace. She is a great example of a G3 actor because Anita takes advantage of everything that Cartoon Animator has to offer. She, I used pretty much every tool and feature that the software has to offer. A lot of you might remember Anita from our previous webinar, How to Start Your Animation Journey with Cartoon Animator. Anita's a great character. And what I wanna do is, I, I, to start us off, I wanna show you a quick animation of Anita in action so that you can, there we go, so that you can see exactly how a good quality G3 actor can perform. So watch this and then we'll get started. Okay, so that is my character Anita. Now, we only have about an hour to get through as much of the process as I can to show you how Anita works. What I wanna do is I wanna break this character down, go in behind the scenes, show you how she's built, show you all the tools and features and how to use them. But I don't wanna muck around, I wanna get started. So let's dive right in. When you create a new character, the first thing you're gonna notice is you have three folders that make up your character. The RL bone human folder, the RL bone head folder, and the RL image folder. And it's important that you understand and know what each of these folders holds, and you'll have a better understanding of what you're building. So let's start off with the RL bone human folder. This folder contains all of the pivot points for all of the parts of the body for your character. Cartoon Animator uses a cutout puppet system. So each body part is an individual cutout part around which it will rotate around a pivot point. So think of the pivot point as being like a little pin that's stuck into the cutout and it will rotate around that point. So that's the first thing that you need to know. The second folder is the RL bone head folder. This folder, contains all of the pivot points of just the face parts. Now you'll see that my character Anita has a lot of pivot points. I've added in a lot of extra features into this character beyond what the template characters have. And I'll show you how you can add all as many features as you want to your character. The third folder that we have is the RL image folder. This folder contains all of the sprites for the body and the face parts. And then there's a separate subfolder inside here called the RL image head folder. And if we open that, you'll see that all of the face parts are in here and they're all layered up in order, ascending order behind each other. Now, if you don't learn another thing from this entire webinar, the next two things that I'm going to tell you are the most important things to remember. So pay attention. Number one, naming. It is vital that you name your pivot points and your corresponding body or face parts identical, okay? Even a single letter wrong and you're going to have missing parts in your character or they're going to be floating all around space and you're going to drive yourself crazy. So if we have a look, for instance, at Anita's left brow, okay? The pivot point is called L brow with a colon at the end of it and we'll get to the colon in a second. And then if we go down to the RL image folder where we've got all our sprites, 
and we open the RL image head, which contains all the face sprites. When you find the, uh, the old brow, then name the same, L-B-R-O-W with a colon at the end of it. Make sure that they're named identical and you'll save yourself a lot of drama. The second thing is the colon. You'll notice that every pivot point and every sprite has a colon at the end of the name. The colon signifies to Cartoon Animator that these are parts that make up the character. The colon is essential to be there at the end. If you don't put the colon at the end of your folder or your pivot point, then again, you're gonna load your character up and you're gonna have missing parts and parts in the wrong place and bits and pieces flying around everywhere. So make sure you put that colon in. And while we're here, it's a good time to point out the difference between a parent layer and a child layer. You see, if you have a look at Anita's nose, she actually has her nose broken up into three parts. I have the nose and then I have the two nostrils as separate parts. The reason that I do this, and we'll get to that a little bit later on, is that when you're creating your 360 head and you have your character's head moving around, I always start with a forward facing head like you see here, I break the nose up into three parts. That way, as the head turns, this nostril can disappear behind the nose rather than just swapping sprites, which I'm not a fan of swapping sprites because it, you just get that little flicker which takes you out of the moment. You can build your layers of your nose or any other part of the face so that as it turns, you can have the nostrils turn to the side. And by doing that, the reason that we have child layers and parent layers is so that when we go into Cartoon Animator and we'll just duck into Composer Mode just for a second so that I can show you. When we go into Composer Mode with Anita and we open up our 360 head creator, the idea is when we have the nose to, I'll just turn the bones off for a second. Let's turn the bones off. The idea is when you turn the character to the side, as you can see, the nostril here will just disappear behind the nose. So rather than just doing a straight sport, sw uh, sprite swap, you can have the, the nostrils disappear behind the nose. So that's the benefit there. And what we're doing is we create the, pa the parent layer and the child layer. So with the nose, the nose we, in the pivot point has nose, that is the main layer. The child layer is the nostril layer. And we name it with the name of the parent layer first, nose, followed by two colons to signify that this is the parent layer. And then the name of the child layer, our nostril with a single colon at the end. And that tells us that that is the child layer. So now the, the, one of the benefits here is when we go to transform, and we select Anita's nose. If we move Anita's nose when we're setting up the 360 head, you'll notice that the two nostrils come with it. Now, you don't have to do that. You can do this all manually if you would prefer to do it, which I generally usually do, but it's nice to know that you can have parent and child layers that will move around together. All right, the next thing I wanna discuss is the importance of the normal folder. Every single sprite in the head and the body, when you open it up, the very first subfolder is called normal. The, normals, the normal folder is the sprite that will show up first in your character when you open your sprite editor. So if we select Ania and we open the sprite editor, you can see that no matter what body part I select, the very first sprite is going to be called normal. If I go to the face, the very first sprite of everything is called normal. Your first subfolder of all of your sprites is called normal with a colon at the end of it. If you don't call it normal, if you call it something else, when you load your character, bits and pieces are gonna be all over the place and you're gonna drive yourself crazy. Now, beyond that, you can have as many sprites as you want. You're not limited to one sprite. And a really good way of showing you this is to go down to Anita's feet down here. Let's turn the left foot off for a second. As you can see, Anita's right foot, okay? There's the right foot called our foot with a colon at the end of it. 
and it has a pivot point called R foot, which matches so that we know where we're rotating around. When I open that folder, the very first folder is called normal. And then inside that folder, we have all the curves that make up this sprite. But when you look at the left foot, let's just turn the right foot off for a second. When you look at the left foot, you'll notice that I actually have three different sprites for the left foot. The first one must be called normal with a colon at the end of it. The other two, three, four, however many you want to make, call it whatever you want. The purpose of this is when we go back to Cartoon Animator and you can see it, there's our first sprite, normal. Then we've got the choice of the forward facing foot sprite, which I like because when your character's standing still, it just gives it a really good balance. And then you've got the mirrored foot sprite in case she trips over and you want her foot facing the other way. I don't know why, it's just there. So you can have as many different sprites as you want. Just make sure that that first one is called normal. All right, moving on. Let's have a look at Anita's mouths. Now the mouths work just the same as pretty much any other sprite or face part. The idea being that the very first sprite is called normal with a colon. And then beyond that, we have all the different mouth sprites. Now it's important that if you're working from the template character or any character that the first 15 sprites that you keep them named the same as the template character. The reason for this is because when you apply dialogue in a WAV or an MP3 format, and you want your character to speak, when you drop your audio in, Cartoon Animator is going to select between these 15 sprites, and it's going to cycle through them to create auto lip syncing. So to give you the best lip syncing it can, it will choose from those. But if you don't name the folders the same as the first 15, Cartoon Animator goes, oh, I don't know where it is, and you can have dramas. But beyond that, beyond the first 15 sprites, go crazy, have as many as you want, it doesn't matter. My character Anita here has 55 different mouth sprites. Um, and the purpose for that is because that way, when I do my lip syncing, emotions and speech, I can get a lot more uh, realism from my lip syncing. I can get a lot better uh, emotions and expressions from her face by having more mouth sprites. So get in there and give your character as many mouth sprites as you want. Another thing that you're able to do with your characters is to add custom parts. You'll see, let's just close the mouth sprites up for a second so that we don't have too many folders open. Okay, you can see that my character Anita has a lot of additional face parts that are not on the normal template character. I've broken the hair up into eight different parts so that when I move the head, when I'm rigging the 360 head, I can change her hairstyle. Uh, it also means that you can add spring bones to individual parts of the hair. The glasses are made up of three different parts. I've added in the cheeks and the freckles. These are all extra parts that I've added to the character. You can add them to the body or you can add them to the face, add as many different parts as you want. All you need to remember is when you add a new face part, let's take for instance, Anita's glasses. When you add a new face part, make sure you've got the pivot point. Here it is here. And then you have your sprite for it. And make sure that the first folder is called normal and then your curves are inside that. If you've got that, everything's gonna pair up when we load Anita into Cartoon Animator and everything will work fine. You'll notice that I broke the glasses up into three parts. You don't need to, okay? I could just as easily have the glasses as a single sprite and then deform it when we're going to work on uh, the 360 head. I'll just duck back into composer mode for one second and show you why I break the glasses up into three parts. The reason I do this is because, let's turn the bones off. The reason I do this is because when I go and set up my different angles for the 360 head, I'm able to work on the shapes of each individual part of the glasses without affecting the overall shape of the glasses. So I can take just this part and I can shape it however I want and it doesn't affect 
the rest of the glasses. So that's my reasoning for why I do that. Okay, let's take a break for a second. Just breathe and take a one minute break for a second because I know that everything I'm throwing at you here, that there's a lot of information. I get it. I know that we're going at 100 miles an hour because as I said, we've only got an hour to try and get as much of this in as we can. I know you might be overwhelmed and think, oh my God, how am I gonna remember all this? Don't stress about it. Watch, finish the webinar with us today. Then go away, download my tutorial on how to rig a G3 character, read through it along with the webinar. It's all step-by-step. Step. I go into even more detail there than I will here. Then come back, watch the webinar again. This is all gonna slowly start to fall into place because the good news is everything is repetitive. Once you do something once, like uh, the glasses, for instance, once you do something once and you've done the bridge of the glasses, you got your pivot point, you've got your sprite, you've got your normal folder, you've got your colon, you move on and you do the next part of the glasses, same process. It's all very repetitive. You make your first character, it's easy after that. You'll just keep going. Okay, let's move on. Let's have a look at the puppetry for Anita's eyes. Back in the olden days where I come from 10 years ago when I started with Cartoon Animator, we really only had the option of having the eyes as sprites. So we had the one sprite was the open eyes. If we blinked, that was another sprite. If we looked to the side, that was another sprite. That's how we did eyes. But now with facial puppetry, we can have this most beautiful, smooth, dynamic motion of the eye rotating around in the eyeball that looks fantastic. I'm gonna show you how to set up your eyes, but what I wanna to do to start with is to go back and play this animation for you of Anita again, just one more time. But this time, I want you to pay attention specifically to the movement of her eyes. So watch that and then we'll get started. As you can see, Amiga has expressive, realistic eyes. And when you get in there and you keyframe all this motion, you can get a really realistic performance out of your characters now. When you compete, when you like uh, add that to the 360 head, it's amazing how three dimensional Anita's head can look. Um, so to set up your facial puppetry eyes, it's still a very similar process to everything else that I've showed you. What we'll do is we'll take a look at the left eye and I'll show you how that works. If we open the left eye, you'll see that we have all these different expressions, all these different sprites for the eye. You only really need to have the first five, like with the mouths where I said, don't go changing the names of the first 15 sprites of the mouths because that's what Cartoon Animator is looking for. With the eyes, don't go changing the first six sprites. Keep them the same, keep them named the same, and you'll be okay because that's what it's going to look for when it's doing uh, facial detail settings. So let's have a look at the first folder. And we know now that the first folder is always called normal with a colon at the end of it. When we open that up, you'll see that we have three subfolders. Here's what they do. First of all, we have the iris. The iris is just the little colored dot in the center of the eye. If we open that folder up, we've got all the curves that make up the iris. Secondly, we have the eye white folder. This is all of the eye except the little circle, colored circle in the middle of the eye. So we open it up and there's all our curves. And finally, we have the mask layer. The mask layer is a single curve which controls what parts of the eye, the iris, the little colored circle will be seen. So when the iris is over the top of the mask layer, in Cartoon Animator 5, it will be visible. When the iris moves outside of the mask, outside the edge of the mask, it will be invisible. And the easiest way to show you that is here, when we go into Cartoon Animator, and we'll just quickly open up the facial animation setup and click on the eye. Okay, you can see this is the iris, and you can see the eye white of Anita's eye. When I grab the iris and I move it around, 
When it's over the top of the mask layer, it's visible. And when it's not, it's invisible. And that's how we set up the eye layers. Um, all right, let's move on. So now that we've got our character pretty much set up here, we've got it all rigged, what we need to do is to export our character. Now, because I use Coral Draw, I just have to go File, Export, and, oops, a daisy, uh, Export, where are we, move that bar, and then export it, replace it, and I'm presented with this menu. And I need to make sure that the compatibility is SVG 1.1, and the styling options are presentation attributes. Why? I don't know. That's just what I've always been told to do. So that's what I do. So then we're going to save our character and we're going to export it. So now we can go back into Cartoon Animator 5, start a new project. Oops. Start, here we go. Go back into stage mode, start a new project, and we can grab our file of Anita, and we can add that to, oh, one second, I need to bring that down, and we can minimize that, and now we can drag, sorry guys, we can drag Anita into Cartoon Animator 5. Now, at this point, don't be surprised if when you go to do this, you get an error message, okay? I've been making characters for a very long time and I still get error messages from time to time when I go to bring a character in. It's usually just a number of key things that will be responsible for you getting an error, okay? Generally, your pivot point and your corresponding body part aren't named the same. You might have a letter wrong somewhere, that can be a problem. You don't have a normal folder as the first subfolder of a sprite group. That can be a problem, or you've missed a colon at the end of the group in either the pivots or the body parts or the face parts. Any one of those problems, they're the first things to go looking for because 99% of the problems that I've ever had were those. And you're going to finish your first character and you're going to load it up and you're going to get an error message and you're going to go, no, I've done everything correct. It's not me, it's the software. It's not the software, it's you. It's always you. I know because it's always me. It's always me that does it wrong. Let me give you an example of what can happen. Let's start a new project. Say, for instance, we bring our Anita file here, this one here. We drag and drop our Anita file into Cartoon Animator, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> we get an error message. OK, this is what an error message generally looks like. And you'll notice, like you can look at it straight away and go, well, her left shank is missing and her right foot is missing. So clearly we've made a mistake there. It's gonna be one of those things that I mentioned. It's always one of those things. But in the SVG error window here, you've got your little preview. And if you click on your open warning log, that will also give you some information helping you narrow down the search for what the problem is. So if we click on that, it says, can't find the matching bone name. Please recheck the layer L schnack. Now, Clearly, her left shank should not be called El Schnack. So what we need to do, we'll start a new project for a second. What we need to do is to go in. This is our Anita character here. We need to, first of all, open up everything. And you'll see that the right shank is called our shank. That's correct. But the El Shank is called El Schnack and it should be called shank. So all we need to do is to fix up the spelling there, and that's going to correct the problem. And you'll notice her right foot is missing because we had the layer invisible in Coral Draw or whatever software you use. Once I make that visible, it pops back. Now, when I export my character and I bring it back into here, we're going to be given no error messages we're going to get Anita as she should be. And it's going to take us straight into composer mode where 
the fun stuff, fun stuff starts to happen because now you get to customize your character and do all the tweaking and the rigging of things like color management, spring bones, 360 head setup, um, facial puppetry. You get to set all that up now. And I'm going to walk you through all of these. And again, this is all in the tutorial that I wrote with more detail, but I'll go through and I'll show you how each of these work. First of all, let's have a look at the facial animation setup. When you open your facial animation setup tab, you get your guide here that tells you, because we've, we've clicked on the left, on the eye here, on the right eye, you can see the little animation of the eye there. It's telling you that what we're setting up in this expression is the eye moving to that direction. So all you need to do is to set your eye up where you want it to be to match this little image in the expression sheet. So if it's on the left-hand side, we go to there. Up, okay, we want, so you can determine how far the parameters go. You can have it roll right back in the head or you can have it just go up a little bit, whatever you want. You'll do the same thing with the eyebrows. Choose each of the different shapes of the eyebrows and using the transform or deform, you can determine what the eyebrow shape looks like when the brow raises in the middle. So at the moment, if we hit preview, that's what it looks like. But if you want it to be crazy exaggerated, you can do that and then it'll go up like that. Whatever you wanna do, you get to sculpt your character's face so that the facial parameters of the detailed settings when you animate later will be set by doing this. You do the eyebrows, you do the eyes, you can do the nose. And what's really cool here is because we set up the nose to have child layers of the nostrils, not only can we set up the shape of the nose for each of these expressions, but you can also change the shape of the nostril as well, if you want to, so that you can have even more control. Now you can't do that if you don't have the child layers, but that's that's something really cool where the child players, uh, child layers really come into their own. Then you select the mouths, you do the same thing with the mouths. Just set up all of your different mouth shapes for the mouths. And finally, you can set up the expressions and the shapes for your eyes, which I love. You can work out how much you want Anita to squint. And then you can work out how wide you want her eye. And also at this point to say, generally with the, this part of it, I like to use the mirror image because I want my eyes to be exactly the same on most standard characters. So if you've got the eye and that's, the, that's how you want it squinted and you're happy with it, all you need to do is hit mirror options, mirror by current expression and apply, and that will automatically get applied to the opposite eye. And that's a handy thing. Make sure as well, that you use your save function in here. Make sure that you, when you make all your changes, make sure that you save your default facial mapping tablet files, table files, because should something happen to your computer and it shuts down unexpectedly, or maybe you wanna come back and do a fresh load of this character and apply all of these settings, you don't have to go back and do it all again. You can just apply the settings. Don't forget as well, if you've got any questions about what I've done, so far, don't panic. We're going to do Q&A at the end. You'll get your chance to ask all the questions. I just don't want to get sidetracked throughout the presentation. All right. Now we move on to the part that everybody wants to know about. And that is the 360 head creator. Cartoon Animator does the most amazing job of taking a little 2D flat character and making that character move up. I've done it again. Huh. We need to do a fresh load of Anita because at the moment we're using the one that I just brought in, which none, nothing's set up. So what we need to do is to quickly load Anita to stage. This is my finished character and I'll show you what the 360 head looks like. So let's go back into composer mode for a second. You know, I did that every time during the rehearsals as well. Now we got that right. Okay, so we've got the 360 head now. Let's try again. Turn off the bones. Yeah, as I was saying. So with the preview of the 360 head, this is just a flat character. It's, it's, it's amazing how it does this. It's just a flat character, but when even you rig, rig a 360 head properly, you can make that character's head turn around, look about the world, and 
look three-dimensional. And that's where your 360 head creator comes in. There's a lot of tools here in the 360 head creator and I'll go through and I'll show them to you. But I'm gonna tell you when I create a 360 head, I don't use them. I don't use any of these tools uh, because what I like to do is to go to each angle and then manually set up my character's face. See, when I, when I create a character, I always create the forward facing character first. Don't do it at an angle because you'll drive, drive yourself crazy. I always do the forward facing character first, have all of my face parts there. And then when I want to do the next angle, I use all those face parts individually and deform them all about to create that side view or that forward facing angle, the up view, whatever. I treat creating a 360 head just like creating a hand puppet, like a Muppet, right? What I do, the first thing I do when I bring a head in is I turn everything off and I just turn on the face and the nose. That's it. Then go around each of your angles and set up the face and the nose. Then hit preview and just move that around. Because honestly, all these other tools that I'm going to show you are all well and good. And you can use all different ways of setting your head up, but there's nothing better than your own eyes. There's nothing better than looking at a character and seeing the head rotate and then you go, oh, you know what? That doesn't look quite right. If it doesn't look quite right, it's not quite right. Spend the time on the character and make sure that you get it looking right. Then once you're happy with the face and nose, then just add the eyes in and check those and make sure that they move and deform and change so that when the character's head moves around, it looks right. An interesting side note here, take a look at Anita's eyelashes. You'll see that when she moves her head to the side, her eyelashes are cut off by the side of her head. That's because the mask button is turned on. When we go to the side, if we turn off, where is it? Where's the, uh, there we go. If we turn off the mask for that, you can see now that when the eye turns to the side, her eyelashes will actually go off the side of her eye, which looks so much better. Again, you don't want to do that with the mouth though, because you certainly don't want her mouth drifting off her face when she turns to the side. So don't do it with the mouth. All right. So then slowly but surely you're going to uh, add all of your face parts back in until eventually you're going to build up a complete face. Now, I'm going to go through and show you what some of the different tools are here and learn. And I've got to tell you, I learned something in preparation for this webinar. There was two tools here that I'd never used myself and that I had to go and learn. So yeah, there's always something new to learn. First of all, the quick head turn setup. When you click that, this determines the angle the maximum angle at which your head will turn up and down. Now, I generally use dimension of a uh, limit of 40. If you want to be specific, 40 for side to side, and I use 30 for up and down. Then you've got your toggle head turn layout. When you select, because at the moment, you'll see that we've got nine positions that we have to manually go through and set up for Anita's head. I find nine is the perfect amount. I don't think I've got a character in the marketplace out of 450 characters. I don't think I've got a character that ever used more than nine. So nine's plenty. But if you wanna be really fussy or you've got a character that's super crazy detailed, you can have up to 25 different angles. And all you need to do is select them, get the little plus sign. And now you've got extra angles that you can set up. And while these are up, it's worth having a look at this particular button here, which I only just learned about in the last week. I've never used it. The average between two points. What that means is, let's say for instance, I have Anita's head here and I had the glasses and I'd been deforming the glasses and I did something really stupid like that, okay? When I check the preview and I'm checking out how her head turns, the head's turning great until I get to here and then it looks really silly and it, it just doesn't work properly. So what you can do is with this angle highlighted, 
if I select this button, I'm going to get Cartoon Animator to work out the average between this angle, which I click, and this angle, which I click. And now you'll see that it's brought it back into shape so that when we do preview now, it works out the mean, the difference, the average between those two points. That's actually really cool. And I genuinely did not know that until a week ago. So yeah, I'm just like you guys, I'm always learning as well. Next up, we have the weight lines. The weight lines, when you set up your character's face, you've got all your layers in order, okay? Then when I click on this particular angle, here's all my layers in order. They can be in a different order. The reason for this is because you'll notice, have a look at Anita's ear here. When she turns this direction, her ear needs to be in front of her head. When she turns this direction, that ear needs to be behind her head. Same as when she's looking forward, I have her ear behind her head. The weight lines determine when you'll change from this layer setup to that layer setup. So if I hit preview, while ever I'm in here, I'm using the layer setup for this particular setup. But once I cross the line, watch, watch Anita's ear uh, on the left-hand side of the screen. Once I move to here, the ear pops across to the front of her ear because we're now using this layer setup. So when we're here, you'll see that the left ear is behind the face. Where's the face? There we go. The left ear is behind the face. But when we go to this one, you'll see that the left ear is, oh, sorry, the right ear, this one. The right ear is in front of the face. So again, when we're here, the right ear is behind the face. When we go here, the right ear is in front of the face. So it will swap over. So that's the benefit of that. Now we have the copy feature. This is simple enough. If I've got a setup here and I want to copy it up to this section here, copy and paste it there. Now what happens, oh, that one down to this one rather. Now what happens is there's your setup for that angle, but we've copied it to there. So it's now also the setup for that angle, which means that when I preview and Anita's looking around, when I move down to here, it actually, these two are the same. Now, I gotta be honest, this might be just my opinion. Other people might have lots of different uses for it. I don't use the mirror option, I really don't. The onion skin layer is another option that you have. Again, not one that I use, but all you need to do is select with your layer selector selected, hit onion layer and then click another layer and you will see that layer translucent on top of the layer you're working on. It means that you can still work on this layer and make all your changes, but you can see what the other layer looks like so you can work out how they look together. Look, I gotta be honest with you, I don't use it. And, and a lot of people want more onion skinning in Cartoon Animator 5, but I don't use it. And I'll tell you why. All I need to do, if my character's there like that and she's going to look to the left, all I need to do, <laughs> we forgot to move it back. If my character's there like that, and she's going to look around to the right. I just look at the character and go, well, yeah, that, that looks right. And if I want to make any changes, you just keep playing around with it in your preview mode and you'll see whether or not you feel that the character looks right. Make the changes there. I don't think you need onion skinning, but it's there if you want to use it. We have three buttons at the bottom here, transform, deform, and sprite. Sprite is the other one that I had to learn for this webinar. On transform, you can move the position of any of your face parts. So for instance, if I have any his eyebrow there, but I actually want it to be there on this angle, when we're here, it will be there. But when I hit preview and look at it, when we move, her eyebrow is going to move up into that position. So transform moves the entire shape of a character. Let's get rid of that and go back to where we were. The other thing we have is deform. With deform, let's say for instance, at the turn, we want Anita's eyebrow to completely change shape and go like that. Now, when we start there and we do the preview, you'll notice that deform changes the shape 
of that. Again, they're the only two tools that I really use to build an entire face, transform and deform. With the sprite tool, if you have a different sprite for a body part, let's duck back. Oh, no, no, we've got to stay in composer mode to do this. I told you, I'm still learning this one as well. Let's go back into composer mode. If you've got a different sprite selected for a different angle of the head, say for instance, instead of doing the nose the way I do it in the three parts so that you can have the layers move, say you just want to have the head turn and you want to swap sprites of the nose. You can do that if we go into the sprite editor and you'll see here that we've got the three different angles, forward facing and the two side angles. Currently, this little icon here means that each angle is using the same sprite. But let's say, for instance, on the nose, on when Anita turns her head this direction, that we want a different sprite entirely. You can do that. All you need to do is hit replace, and we'll replace Anita's nose with something else, which is going to look horrible. There we go. And say and we'll flip it. So say, for instance, we put this in as Anita's nose. Let's zoom in so that we can actually see it. We're going to put that in as Anita's nose, which just looks shocking. Now, when we set up our 360 head again, and we go to Sprite, when we move to this angle here, we can have that Sprite swap over and we can replace it with a different Sprite if we want. And now the weights, oops, now the weight lines come into play a lot more because, oh, that's not it. I didn't click the right icon. Now the weight lines come into play a lot more because we're going to determine at what point does that Sprite swap over. So while ever we're in here, the nose will stay at this Sprite. But once we cross that line, it's going to go to the other Sprite. So watch, if we've got the preview, we're here like that. And as soon as we cross that line, the Sprite will swap. Now, as I said, I'm just not a fan of sprite swapping because I think that little flicker of a character's face part just takes you out of the moment. I would much rather build the nose as three layers and then sculpt it using the deform as the deform tool as we go around. Okay, we've got two more things to cover before we get to the Q&A. And to do that, what I want to do is to bring in a fresh load of Anita. And here we go. Uh, where are we? Ah, okay, webinar, sorry guys. We're going to find, I gotta find my file, sorry about this. I had it all set up and then it disappeared. Uh, Reillusion, we go to webinars. Oh no, my fault. Okay, we go to community manager. Then we go to webinars, breakdown, and we're going to load Anita. Sorry about that. Okay, once we load Anita, we're going to set up the color management. Now, in Cartoon Animator 5, you can control the color of every single part of your character, from the color of their eyes to the color of their hairs, all the way down to the color of the tips of their shoelaces. You can do everything. That gives you a lot more control over a character, a lot more customization. And if you're a developer selling your content in the marketplace, it means that your characters are going to be a lot more appealing to people because it extends the life cycle and the uses of those characters. So to set up your color management, we are going to go to the SVG group editor. And you've got two choices. You can group by color or you can group by sprites. For the purpose of this webinar, I'm going to show you coloring by color because that's the way I do it. And what will happen is when we click process, it's going to break up this actor into all of these groups. So it's basically taken every single color of Anita and put it into a separate group. Now, to find out what's what, and I know this looks overwhelming, but it's this is the easiest part of, of building your character. This is absolutely the easiest part because all it is is file management. You're just moving stuff around. So say, for instance, we click on that sprite. It's going to flash to let us know that that's the part that we're working on. And it's going to highlight here that that's the part of the thigh. So if we click the group, we can now see 
that all of these colors here belong to Anita's pants. So generally what I do is you can create your own folder structure your own way, do it however you want. But generally what I do, I will create one folder called body, what did I put screen? called body. And then I will create one folder called clothing. And inside that, I'll start to then create all my individual folders. So say with clothing there, we, call, we select that and we're going to call that pants. Now we know that these sprites here are part of the pants, so they need to go in the pants folder. Highlight them, drag them, go back up to pants and drop them in there and they are now part of the pants. All you've got to do is go through and find all of the parts of the pants and put them in there. And an easy way of doing that is if you click the Sprite button, okay, and go through all of your sprites individually, what happens is it brings up just that Sprite and then you'll see a little arrow alongside of one of the colors. That means part of this part, this group is assigned as part of this sprite. So you grab the color and you take it up and you drop it into the pants folder. And then we scroll down to see if we've got any others. And yep, there's another one. So you grab it and you go up and that's all you got to do. You just got to go through and find every part. Now, the reason that the sprite area as a sprite tab, as opposed to the full tab is handy is because some sprites, as we know, have more than one sprite, right? And when you're in this mode, in the full mode, you only see one sprite. So even though Anita's eyes have, and her mouths have lots of different sprites, we can only see the one. So it's hard to find the sprite we're looking for. So when we go into sprite mode and we open up Anita's face and we, and we click on left eye, it's going to bring up all of the eye sprites for us, okay? And then when I click one of the skin parts like that, it'll come up and say, oh, here is all the group 55 are all parts of the eye. They're all the same color. So we know that's all the skin. So what I do is I go up to body, I create a folder, I call that skin. Then inside that folder, I now, what I do, and you can do it your own way. This don't feel you have to do it this way. I create a group called skin main because under skin, I'll have skin main, then I'll have the freckles, then I'll have their cheeks so that they can all be color managed individually. So now that we've got skin main created, all we need to do is to select them all, and drag them, drop them up into skin main. And that's it, that's how easy color management is. That's truly one of the easiest things that you're going to do. Last but not least, the last thing that I wanna show you is spring bones. And to, do, to show you how spring bones work on a character, what I want to do is to bring in a fresh loading of Anita, take her back into composer mode. Are you still hanging in there with me? I hope you are. I hope you are. Don't worry. It's all going to come together for you. You're going to get this. It'll all come together. Let's have a look at Anita's spring bones. Let's move in on her face so that we can see what we're looking at. And Let's pop that up there and have a look at her face. You can see all the bones that make up Anita's face. The gray bones are static bones. They don't move. The orange bones, only orange because that's the color that we created for the folder. They can be any color that we want. Yeah, why did I pick that? There we go. Let's say the, the blue bones there now, they are the spring bones. And because I'm really pedantic, I'm gonna go back to the orange because that's what I'm used to looking at. The orange bones are the spring bones. They move. Spring bones, I gotta tell you, I am the poster boy for spring bones. Spring bones are the greatest feature tool addition that Cartoon Animator 5 has ever had put in. Because in the past, if you had a character like Anita and you wanted to create her head moving like that and her hair springing around and moving like that as it did, you had to go in and keyframe all the individual motions of the hair. I've done it. It's a pain. It really is. But spring bones give you this wonderful dynamic motion for your character. Pardon me, this wonderful dynamic motion for your character that is automated. 
As you apply emotion and have Anita walk along or she turns ahead, the spring bones take over and they just do their own thing. And the easiest way to work out how to add spring bones is to take some out in the first place so you can see what they do. So let's open up our bone editor and select a bone and delete it. Let's get rid of that bone. Now what's gonna happen is once that bone disappears, if we go into spring bones and click face and watch the preview, you'll notice now that when I move Anita's head, this part of her hair remains static, doesn't move. All the other parts will still move except that because it doesn't have any spring bones. Let's add some spring bones. The first thing you need to do is to add the bones that we're going to turn into spring bones. So pick your pivot point and then add bone and then just map out where you want your bones to be. Then open your spring bone editor, choose the bone that you want to turn into a spring bone. In this case, it's hair two in brackets one. You don't wanna pick the first bone in a link because you need an anchor point to stay still and then your spring bones can wobble off the end of it. So don't ever pick the very first spring bone. Once you've got your spring bone collected, all you need to do is to work out what folder you're going to add it to. In this case, I'm gonna add it to the hair folder, but you can add as many groups of hair and color them, whatever you want. So I could have individual folders for all of her hair or maybe her skirt or accessories. You can have whichever ones you want. But for this point, we're going to take hair two and add it to the hair group, assign it to the group. And what happens is, those bones turn orange, letting us know that they are now spring bones. And when we hit preview, on when we hit preview on the face, there we go. Those bones are now spring bones and Anita's got that lovely wobbly hair. Now, with your spring bones, the last thing I wanna tell you, with your spring bones, you've got presets here so that you can just quickly apply a preset to a spring bone. So if we hit light, when we preview it, it looks like Anita's hanging upside down. Or if you hit weighted and hit preview, it looks like she just got out of the shower. I love that, that's so funny, I love that. And that's how you add your spring bones. And you have total control over the bounciness, speed, gravity and limit angle of your spring bones. You've got total control over absolutely every part of your character. That's it. That's how I rig my characters. So just to finish up, before we get into the Q&A, let me just say one more time. Watch today's webinar, go away, download my tutorial, read through it, come back and read, watch the webinar again. And I promise you, this will all start to fall into place. And if you just start slow on this process and simple, you're going to get there in no time. All right, that's the end of what I want to do. I'm going to hand it over to Kai, who's going to help me out. And we are now going to do some Q&A. So thank you for watching, everybody. Hello, Kai. Hey, I'm back. Uh, I think, uh, honestly, that was probably hands down one of the most uh, comprehensive uh, webinars, tutorials, learning events that I've ever seen on character <laughs> creation in Cartoon Animator 5. Um, there's well, even some stuff I was like, I didn't even really know that, especially honestly, the color management stuff. I, I meant it when I said it. I learned two new things this week. I didn't know about the means when you're doing the, the, the 360 head, the, the mean between two points. I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I'd never used the sprite swapping before. And I'll tell you something. I actually learned that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, no, it, was good. it was good that we we managed to do that. Yeah. So I think everyone to everyone here who's uh, who had the privilege of privilege of watching that I think yeah it's it's something that we can you can definitely want to go back to and like Gary said watch the tutorial that he made and uh um return and practice it I think if you follow all the steps that uh, were kind of shown in this webinar you'd be like an expert character creator in in uh no time to be honest I've made a lot of them and, and and you know what's interesting too is the very first cartoon character that I made for Cartoon Animator, right? And we're talking 10 years ago when it was called Crazy Talk Animator. The very <laughs> first character I, I built, when there was so much easier back then, but the first character I built took me three months, three months of full-time work to try and understand it. Now, I, like, as I said, I've done 450 characters, right? Now I can, I can draw, design, rig, and release to the marketplace a character in a day. 
right? So it's repetition. It's not it's not because I'm smarter than anybody else. It's just repetition. You're doing the same thing over. And the more you do it, the easier it becomes. Absolutely. Yeah, you could just whip it up in no time nowadays. Yeah. I remember back in those days, it was a little more complex, a little more. It's, it's complex still, but it's just a lot easier. And it's more kind of streamlined and organized. You know. And the thing is, honestly, you were the person who helped me. Like 10 years ago, you were the guy. You were the guy. <laughs> who, no, you were. You answered all of my questions. And I drove you absolutely mental for weeks on end, but you were so patient and you answered all my questions. And now it's just great that 10 years later, I'm in that role and I'm helping everybody that gets frustrated. I'm going, don't worry, we'll get there. We'll get you there. So it's nice to, it's nice to have come full journey. Yeah, and absolutely. I, th I think this is, this is by far the most requested workflow that we've ever had in, in, a, in a webinar. So yeah. uh, Every, hopefully everyone wants to know how to do this. I think we'll have thousands of views in the next few days on the YouTube channel, no doubt. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Um, so, all right. Well, if you want to go through, if you want to go through the questions, because we've got the 17 questions there at the moment, I guess we'll get to more of them. If look, can I just say, if the question is related to the webinar that we did today, we'll try and answer it. If the question is not related to the webinar that we did today, then I'll suggest where you can go to get an answer. Or if we've got time at the end, I'll see if I can help. How's that? Yeah, absolutely. We got a lot of a lot of learning resources that can generally be covered uh, that can cover a lot of these questions. But uh, like Gary said, we'd like to keep it focused for sure, um, just because we want to focus today's webinar on the character creation, character rigging part. So do you um, want so, to yeah. the question down, or do you want me to do it? How do you want to do it? Uh, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll I'll go for it, and then uh, okay. well, if it's if it's related to the uh, rigging process and whatever you showed. Um, I'll definitely let you take care of it because I know yep. you're you're the pro in that uh, regard right. there. Uh, question question first from Vicky here. Um, she says, will you cover how to get an actor sitting in the car today? Uh, no, Vicky, that's an animation kind of question, I guess. Can I, can I just say really quick for Vicky, if you go to the Cartoon Animator Users page, that topic is actually being discussed right at this second. And there's a whole thread there going on um, that explains how to do it. But yeah, and if you send me, send me an email, Vicky, and I can sort you out with that one really easy. I can point you to that really easy. Yeah, and there's some people also that mentioned here as well. Uh, they're asking in the chat. I want to remind people to put your questions in the Q and A panel, not in the chat. Um, otherwise, we won't be able to answer that. I don't but, read the uh, chat during the webinar. Yeah, I did see that pop up. Someone said, uh, "Is this going to be on YouTube?" Yes, this is going to be published on YouTube, so you can uh, review it on your own time. All right. Uh, next question from Tanya: How would I go about re-rigging my G two character for G three, or is this possible? Don't. What do you Just, say? No, look. I, I got to be honest here. If I, if I had a character in, I do, I've got characters that were G2 characters and I wanted to turn them into G3 characters. Just start the whole process again. Just take your original character and then go through the process that I showed you today, step by step and rebuild your character. It's the only way to do it. Yeah. Generally you're going to want to have to start from scratch there. There's no kind of conversion, easy conversion process. So uh, yeah. Um, and uh, Tonya asked, what's the difference between Sprite and Bone? I think we kind of covered a lot well, of that. I can explain that just quickly. Sure. Um, really speaking, you've got you've got two things. You've either got a pivot point or a sprite. So that there, that there is a sprite because it's a body or a face part. And the pivot point is essentially what you're thinking of as a bone. Because once the character comes in to Cartoon Animator, then let's just jump back to stage mode for a second. Then when you open up your 2D motion, <laughs> look at it here. Uh, when you open <laughs> your motion editor, there's that pivot point and it connects a bone between that pivot point and the next pivot point. So that's the difference between a bone and a pivot point. Cool. Yeah, that's some funky looking hair there. She's- I know, she's just gonna have a chunk. I like that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um all righty uh genzo genzo rubin i've never used colons is this vector specific i've never had the problems of what you speak uh so this is kind of earlier on in your in your uh demo you can read that as well too right gary yeah yeah, yeah no no i can see it um okay. look with the normal folder everything that i showed you today all the process that i showed you today are just the way that reillusion taught me to do it right and as i said at the beginning my process not, might not be the only process. There could be other ways of doing it. It's just that the way I do it, I know works. That's why I teach it this way. Um, so yeah, I, if, you, if you 
if you don't always call the default layer normal and everything works fine, then continue to do it. But I was always told the first folder must be called normal, must have a colon at the end of it. And in the early days of Cartoon Animator 5, maybe it was just in the beta then. But if you didn't call it normal, what would happen is bits and pieces would fly around all over the place. So maybe that's changed. It's just something that I do. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, earlier on in, in the G3 process, we were very strict about the folder and the, and the group names and stuff in Photoshop. Um, I don't even know, to be honest, if they've relaxed that. But uh, like Gary just mentioned, if if uh, if what you're doing is working fine, then yeah. <laughs> just yeah, keep sure. going with it. You yeah, know, yeah. use use the guidelines, but you can kind of uh, see if other things work too, you know. Yeah, if it ain't bright, don't against that. Absolutely. All right, question from Johnny. Uh, why won't it let me add more than six eyes? Have you ever yes, tried to will. do that? Yes, yeah. it will. Yeah, of course it will. You can add as many as you want. Look, um, there's the normal smile close, eye close, scare close, eye squint and iris change are the first six sprites that Cartoon Animator 5 must have. You've got to have those. But as you can see, I've got casual, scared, sad, angry, eye close. I added all those in myself. You can add as many as you want. There's no reason why you can't. And all I do, if you have a look here at the right eye, for instance, normal, smile, eye close, blah, blah, blah. There's your first six, right? Beyond that, I just add my own layers. So long as you've got the iris, the eye white and the mask, you can add as many as you want. There's absolutely no reason why it won't let you do that. So yeah, you can do it. If it, if it won't let you add, okay, if, you, if it won't let you add it, then get onto the Cartoon Animator users Facebook page and ask that question there because I'm telling you, you can do it. And if you jump on there, we'll find you someone that will help. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think we uh, put that link in the chat window, the uh, Cartoon Animator uh, Facebook page. Yeah. That's probably the most active community we have it, it, uh, for it, it's Cartoon the Animator. the best community I've ever been a part of, honestly. The, the people in there know their stuff. They're in there all day. I'm in there all day, every day. And I'm forever answering questions for people in there. And I love it. It's great. <laughs> right on. All righty. Uh, next Q&A question here from Vicky. Can I make a full, can I make my folder a different color as I got confused on which is the original and which is mine? Which folder? I I'm kind of curious question. about that as well, too. Maybe Vicky, you can kind of clarify that in a yeah, follow-up question. Which folder you mean? The only Medium. folders that I know that you can change color of are the Springbone folders. Yeah. All right. Uh, so maybe Vicky, you can clarify that a little bit later if you need to. Yep. Um, Anya says, do you have any advice on how to best add black outline on a sprite that has pivot points, for example, arms and forearms? Anya, I'll tell you something. When I very first started making cartoon characters, all my early stuff, the little mates and all that sort of thing, they all had a black outline. And the reason that I stopped doing the black outline is because it's so hard. If, if your character's using bendy arms and it's all one sprite, you're fine. But if you've got a character that's got a forearm and an upper arm and it's two different parts and they've got a join, trying to do it with that black outline in a way that keeps it smooth is really, it can be done. There are guys doing it, but I'm telling you, it's way harder than making a character without a black outline. Um, one of the things that I've put into the suggestion box for with Reillusion for the future of Cartoon Animator would be, and, I, and I've submitted this, is the idea of having characters and just having a button that you can press that will give it a black outline, uh, like the Mr. Bean cartoons and stuff like that, and then vary the thickness. I think that would be a fantastic thing. But I, yeah, here's my best advice. Don't do it. <laughs> just get yeah. rid of it. Um, I, I think Anya has a good point, though. That's, that is kind of one thing that, that's a wishful feature from a lot of people is to have those characters with a uh, black outline. Yeah. Right now, we kind of recommend that you just kind of have the, uh, no, you know, no outline. Uh, just for the ease of kind of showing the rotation and keeping it clean, clean looking. Yeah, um, I mean, there, there, are, there are guys out there doing it. Warwick Hayes has got some great characters out there. They've got uh, a pencil sketch outline to it and stuff like that. And as I said, my, my earlier characters, if you go and have a look at my little mate characters, they've all got a black outline. So it can be done. It's just a little bit too difficult. It is tricky, yeah. <laughs> um, so Anya asked the follow-up question. Does the character have to have all body parts or can I rig with only the upper body? I'll just make it all invisible. Yeah, you can just make the bottom part invisible. <laughs> you can make any any body part Think invisible. Outside so. the box. Think outside the box. If you want a disembodied torso, go for it. Exactly. <laughs> it's Halloween time. Make it make it uh, well, make that's the, the bottom your body invisible. Thing we know about the color management too is that you can use the slider to make things uh, change the opacity. 
So you can also have them transparent, uh, translucent, uh, invisible or opaque using the sliding scale. So if you've got a character with legs, you can just turn the legs off and have it just be an upper body. Yeah, no problem. Absolutely. Um, all right, Vivek, question from Vivek. Every time I have to replace the sprite on a G3 character, I have to resize the sprite and I end up losing a lot of production time resizing slash adjusting the sprites. Is there an easier slash automatic way of appropriate size replacement that saves time? That's a good question. Uh, Gary, do you know what he's talking about there? I do. I do. Look, in the, in the early days of creating characters, this was one of my biggest problems was, was working out scaling and stuff like that to work out what size to do it. If you look at my Anita character here, for instance, right? And I just got to move everything around. If you have a look at my Anita character here, you've got your, your scale on the outside of the character, which is in millimeters, I'm assuming. Now that I open my rule, yeah, it's in millimeters. And uh, because it's a vector character, I imagine I could probably do her much smaller. It's just completely random that this is the scale that I set her up at. Um, so she's 160 mil wide. And um, how tall is she? Oh, you're fat? Yes, <laughs> 160 <laughs> mil wide and just over 200 mil tall. But, and, and all, I, all I have to do when I do it is to make sure that the page setup is, this is a good tip actually, make sure that the page setup is just a little bit wider than your character. I can actually have that reduced down a little bit. And if I, say for instance, I wanted to just swap over a sprite, what I could do would be to copy that arm sprite, right? Start a new page. Oh, this silly screen's in the way. Uh, then start a new page, put that in the middle of the page and then just resize my page down, right? So I'd resize my page down to about two by two and then provided that area around the outside gives me a little bit of white space, then I can just export the image as uh, an SVG, call it SVG. I can just export that, okay? And then in Cartoon Animator, I can select that. I'm sorry, I've got, I've got this screen moving around all over the joint. Now, you've got your, your sprite here, and then you just hit Replace, and you just bring in that test. I know it's going to look exactly the same because I didn't actually change anything, but we just change that sprite over, and it should just automatically, you know, it's bought in the entire SVG. Oh, because I've saved it as the test. What happened? Why well, I don't know why that did that. Why did that? Why did that do that? I missed what you did for a second there. Yeah. Well, I have I've got the arm sprite there. Oh, I'll try it this way. And I was going to export it as an SVG. And I'll just call it arm. Right. And then no issues. There it is there. And then I went back into here and I put uh, add the sprite in. Oh, that's why. Okay, that's why. That's why because it's gone to a different spot. It's gone to a different spot. I'm looking for arm. Um, I'll bet that's what it's done. Hang on. What did we save it as? Sorry to hold everybody up. What did we save it as? Okay, let's try one more time. File, export. Yeah, break down a character rigging. Test SVG. Oh, the arm, right? Then when we go into here, why is the arm not there? Did you yeah. save it as an SVG? I saved it as an SVG. I exported it as an SVG. All right, I'm going to try one more. This is going to frustrate me now. I'm going to. I need to work this out. File. Let's export. I'll put it in a different folder. Um, there we go. We'll, we'll just save it here, and we'll go. Um, as a scalable SVG. No issues. SVG. Click OK. Come back into here. So now it's under my exports folder, and it should be called Arm. Um, there it is. There. Click open and it should, yeah, there we go. And then all I need to do is just rescale it down to whatever scale I want. Here's, here's a good tip for the person that asked that question, Vivek. So I can put it back in like that. If I was doing that, I wouldn't actually do that, okay? I wouldn't do it that way. The way I would do it is to go back to my original character here, make the changes in here, export the entire SVG character, reload it, and then, say, and then load up all of my saved um parameters remember i told you when you go into the um facial setup that you can save all your settings okay once you load in your new svg character you can just reload those settings go back and load everything 
But I do believe very shortly, very shortly, um, that you'll be able to just do the pipeline where you can just export to yeah. Illustrator and stuff like that. So yeah, I was I was going to mention when I first uh, read uh, Vivek's uh, message here that um, if you are going to do that, then I would recommend, uh, like Gary said, re-importing the entire character as opposed That's to okay. kind of importing individual sprites and you have to resize them and stuff can go all wrong and stuff. So. Um, it's often faster just to re-import the entire character. It absolutely is. That's that's one of the things that I've learned over time. Don't don't try and just break down individual little bits. Just do the whole thing again and just import all your saved settings. Much easier. Because that's kind of the way it used to be before we had uh, you know the PSD pipeline. So I know I know how frustrating that and can you know be. What? I didn't even use that. I never used the PSD pipeline except to set up the eyes for puppetry in Cartoon Animator Four. It's the only time I ever use it, and it used to drive me crazy because I had to go to Photoshop to do it. it used to drive. Yeah, me crazy. you're you're hardcore, Gary. <laughs> Too hardcore for me. <laughs> go. On. Uh, okay, so Vicky's asking, can I make a 360 degree head from a photo? Um, yeah, but I don't see I've why not. I've never done it. Can you do that still? From like a, a person's image? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a couple ways you can do it. I, I think maybe she's talking about the 360 head methodology that you mentioned. How that would, you do would it be tricky. <laughs> How would yeah, you, do it's, you can only do that with the for the morph faces, and they kind of what it kind of does is it just kind of morphs the face, like bloop, bloop, yeah. you know, it doesn't yeah. use the three sixty head functionality. So, look, some, uh, somebody some mentioned something actually mentioned in the last webinar we did. They were talking about can you use um, characters from uh, Character Creator, the three D characters? Can we use them in Cartoon Animator? And I said at the time, honestly, in my opinion. It, the, the amount of effort that that takes, you're better off just creating it in 3D or creating it in 3D, uh, 2D, not trying to blend it across like that. It's it, it, 3D doesn't come across to 2D easy because we need so many sprites. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, question from Tracy. Hold on a sec here. Whoops. I just clicked something. Ah. Crap. Okay. Uh, back to the question. Basically just covered. Yeah. Uh, do you... Tracy asks, how do you properly prepare an extra image spray, like an extra mouth for SVG import? I oh, think we okay. kind of, yeah. We did, okay, cover go, it, go yeah. we did cover it, but here's an interesting thing. If you just go, if you just go back to your original character, uh, one second, I just open up the, the Docker here. Oh man, so many windows and screens. Um, okay, if we go down to the mouth, right? If we go down to the mouth sprites, where are we? Here we go. Um, these are all your mouth sprites here, right? So if I wanted to create another mouth sprite in a different, in a fresh page, I would create the mouth sprite and then just copy and paste it in here as a new layer and just make sure it's the same dimensions as what's here. And then when you load the character, it's going to be the same size. That's basically what I would do there. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Gary just kind of explained it right there. <laughs> I think and, it's not too that, tricky. Honestly, if I answer anybody's questions and I don't answer them the way you want it answered, I don't give you the answer you want or what I say doesn't make sense, whatever, please just send me an email and I'll, I'll answer it another way. I'm always available. Right on. Uh, next question from Jeff here. Can you explain how masks work and how many different masks can you have? Okay. With the masks, really, um, any part that you put onto a face can be masked and a really really good uh example of that is when we open up the face you will see there's a couple of parts that i didn't use in the webinar and that's these two parts here okay you can see i, I have these two really large sprites on the outside of anita's face that represent the highlight of the the dark shadow and the light shadow on her face okay i didn't talk about this through the webinar because i kind of felt it was just a little bit too far out of what we were doing but I, I create these two parts so that when the character's head turns, I can have a shadow on the side of the face. And then all I need to do is to hit the mask button on that and it will mask to the face. I've done the same with the shadow on the hair here, right? And it will, it will mask to the side of the face. And then that way, when we open up the 360 head turn, you can see that that shadow on her face here how it moves around, it just makes it just it makes it more convincing that that head is three dimensional. It's the same as this shadow here. When I move it around, it disappears when it's that side, but it appears when it's that side. Um, every layer that you add can have a mask to it. Every anything that moves outside of the face can be masked. There's even the nose, for instance. 
if you've got a, a really long nose, like that extra nose sprite that I showed before, if you've got a really long nose that extends beyond the face, if you hit the mask button, it'll stay, it'll cut it off at the edge. So yeah, every layer can be a mask layer. Yeah, and, and the masks are, are defined in Illustrator or Corel Draw or whatever you use. Um, those are in your, in your groups. Um, same, same with the eyes as well. Um, you can edit and adjust the masked area, which area is masked and which area isn't um, yep. in your in your uh, editing program. Yeah. Um, okay, let's go on to the next question from anonymous attendee. Is it possible You're to add like, layers? We've got more questions now too. <laughs> yeah, it's like a never ending uh, well, stream of questions here. Uh, is it possible to add layers of clothing over body sprite so I can create different t-shirts, for example, I can swap in and out? Or do I need to create a separate character for each so, outfit? Good you question. can absolutely do that now with Cartoon Animator 5. I'm, go, go, back and watch, go back and watch the first webinar that I did called How to Start Your Journey with Cartoon, How to Start Your Animation Journey with Cartoon Animator. There's a section in there where I talk about how you can turn layers off. Um, and if you go and have a look on my YouTube site, we might be able to put the link at the end, but if you go to my YouTube site, I actually have a video there on a character called Melvin. And you can take, you can make his jumper disappear so that you can see the shirt underneath it. Then you can make the shirt disappear so you can see the skin underneath it. You can do that all within the one character now. I'm gonna tell you, it takes a lot of forward thinking, but it can be done, yes. So uh, if you want anonymous attendee, send me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll send you the link to the video. Yes, it can be done, absolutely. Are you sure you want an email from anonymous attendee? Yes, I do. Sounds, Sounds very like a, mysterious. Seems <laughs> like an ominous sort of name there. I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, next question here is from Bill. Bill's message. It's a very important one. <laughs> <laughs> Bill. All right. Bill Hernandez. This is the type of style of webinar that I have been waiting for for a long time. I learned a lot. I'm looking forward to more webinars like this from anyone doing webinars for your illusion. Are we going to see this type of format from now on? I want to see more pie webinars. Thank you, Bill. Your money is in the mail. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. Uh, I think we'll definitely have more of these webinars uh, for sure. And I really enjoy having a co-host and, and kind of just, you know, uh, learning a lot from these people. Because I, I, like Gary mentioned before, everyone has slightly different workflows and uh, yeah. little quirks that they have in their workflow. And I, I like well, to both, see it in action both myself. times that we've done the webinar now, I've learned new things. Both, both webinars, I've, I've learned things that I didn't know before. I never claim to know everything and I never claim that my way is the best way. It's just, I, you know what, sometimes I'll do things that takes 10 steps and someone will come along and go, you know, you can do that in two steps. And I go, no, I didn't. I just do it the way I know. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, you actually learn things preparing for the webinar too. Oh, so, yeah. That's oh, what crap. Happens. That's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let's go on to a question from Vivek here again. He says, exporting to transparent video doesn't work for CTA 4 on Mac OS, it export the default gray background as I export it with MOV files. Um, so Vivek, I think, you know, a lot of that stuff, well, first of all, CTA 4, um, you, a lot of that can be solved generally. I'm not saying this is gonna be the solution for you, but a lot of it can be solved by updating all your codecs. Uh, you have to make sure that yeah. you, you know, yeah, have all your codecs updated, um, have parts and animator updated to the latest version. I know you're working with four here, it says, um, but update that to the latest version because they still update those to, you know, comply with the latest codec requirements. Um, a lot of that can be resolved with codec downloads and, and upgrade, up, uh, uh, upgrades or updates rather to the latest version. Yep. That's codec's really the, important. yeah, that's the only troubleshooting I can really tell you. Um, Again, aside from that, it's tricky. Yeah. Yeah, but Vivek, post that on the Cartoon Animator users Facebook page. And honestly, it's not that I'm just trying to offload it and go, I don't know, post it over there. It's just that we've got 4,000 people on there. And a lot of those people are really technically minded. I'm not. I am not technically minded. I'm, I draw silly pictures for a living. I don't know the technical side of things. But some of the guys over there, I'll answer that in two seconds. So don't worry. Yeah, a ton of those guys are actually just like, you know, they have backgrounds in computer programming, like computer scientists and stuff. And so they're like, yeah. well, you know. And you know what? Honestly, <laughs> really, if you're going to do shout outs, quick shout out to David Arundel on this one. If you've got a technical question, that guy can answer almost anything. He's, he knows he, he's been around since he's been around as long as I have. And his technical knowledge on Cartoon Animator blows me out of the water. He, he knows his stuff well and truly. He's always the one that always tells me there's always a faster way to do it than I do it. He's always got a better way of doing it. <laughs> Efficiency. 
All right. Uh, another anonymous attendee. Sir, how do how do I link one rope on both sides? I'm not sure what that question means. That's okay. Put it on the cartoon yeah. animator page. That's not to do with this webinar. So put it on there. Yeah, something about ropes. Uh, this is a good one. Um, this is a good one. Okay, so Mike Mills asks, uh, once you do all this rigging, setup and organizing, can you still make edits or additions to the drawing without losing all of this data round trip? Okay, with this one, very shortly, you're gonna be able to do the pipeline between Cartoon Animator and Adobe Illustrator. If that's what you're using, you're gonna have the pipeline there. But what I do, as I, as I said a few minutes ago, and I, I kind of answered this, but I don't know if you heard it or not, but what I do, if, I want to, if I'm working with Anita there and then all of a sudden I go, oh, you know what, I really want to change the shape of her glasses. Rather than try and go in there and change it now by sprite, by sprite swapping, I make sure that I've saved all my settings for anything that I've done so far, like the 360 head, up, 360 head setup, color management, stuff like that. Make sure all they're saved, then go back into Coral Draw, make all the changes I want to the character, export it as a fresh SVG, bring it in, it'll go to composer mode and then just load all your settings over the top and it'll update. It's so much quicker. I do that all the time and it's, you're talking about minutes, minutes. And if you get stuck, give me a call. Absolutely, what he said. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, hopefully you guys caught all that. Uh, next question from Kasim, Kasimwana. This is, a, is this process applied for G2 characters as well? Yeah. No, no, this, uh, this totally different what, process. I showed you today, what I showed you today applies only to the G3 characters SVG for Cartoon Animator 5. G2 characters are a whole other ball game all on their own. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, something we probably won't have a webinar on in any no. time in the future. No, that's, that is a time long gone and past. Yeah, it's time in the past. Uh, okay, question from Iqbal. Uh, thanks for your presentation today. I bought DigiDudes, but it seems the default available motions are not compatible with DigiDudes. Please advise how I can make the most of this asset. I've that is a name. I, this, this is a name I haven't heard in a long time. DigiDudes, really? I think this was a content pack that we had. I think we used a cartoon animator or crazy talk animator too. Oh, really? Uh, I've never this heard is a them. really old content pack. Yeah, they I basically. I thought I'd heard of them all. I thought I'd heard of them all. Yeah. Um, Iqbal, maybe the the um, rigs for those. Oh, this is so long, I can't even remember. The rigs for those will be a little bit different. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any sort of difference. Um, if it's cartoon, if it's cartoon, an, an earlier version of cartoon animator, it's not going to apply to anything here anyway. Yeah, so I think the the newer animations, you're not going to be able to apply to those no. older rig characters. It's not going to be a default. So no. unfortunately, uh, apologies for that, but. Uh, that's like, oh gosh, that's like eight years ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, that, that stuff came out. Um, so it's kind of like uh, trying to use like modern technology with, uh, it's like maybe putting like a PlayStation 5 CD into a Super Nintendo or something like that. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah. So, so apologies for that, Iqbal. I think that uh, that uh, is not going to be possible by default, anyways. Um, you have to do it manually. Um, question from Fareed Do you always use Inkscape or just recently because of SVG? Uh, I'm using Corel Draw, right? Yeah, I don't use Inkscape. I use Corel Draw. I have to tell you, I've been using Corel. I'm up to Corel Draw version 22, and I've been using Corel Draw since version one. As a matter of fact, um, quick bragging point: um, the reason that we have uh, the Corel Draw ability to draw an SVG character in Coral Draw is because I use Coral Draw so much and I produce so many characters that it's one of the reasons why Reillusion actually looked at developing it for Coral Draw and not just Illustrator or anything. But anything that can create an SVG character you can use. But I've I've always I love Coral Draw. I absolutely love it. It is crazy expensive. I'm not going to lie. Coral Draw is crazy expensive and there are alternatives out there, I believe that do the same thing that are cheaper or free. But I use Coral Draw because I know it and I love it and I can move really, really fast in it. Yeah, I think you kind of dated yourself there a little bit. You've been since version one. That's since version one, I know. Try, try to calculate the numbers in my head. How many versions do they have per year or, you know, and they still have the CDs. <laughs> yeah, I just, I just use Illustrator because, you know, Reillusion pays for it. So <laughs> why not? <laughs> Can't complain there. Uh, pa Pavel asks, why in uh, why in G3 are only two body positions and not three? Um, that's a decent question. Uh, Gary, you have any input on that? Um, 
there's, there is no reason. It's just there's forward facing and there's side face, like the, the three quarter view. You can you can create um, side facing character, or you can even create like a, a back character. There's plenty of people out there that create characters that, so that you're looking at behind the character like that. Um, I personally don't even use the forward facing characters. I've never modeled a character forward facing. I just find that everything I need works on that three quarter view, but there's no real reason for it. It's, a, it's just a choice they make. Yeah, there's there's ways to kind of morph the body a little bit, deform the body to kind of uh, simulate uh, slight turning and stuff. Um, there's also the switching between side and front views. Um, but again, we are working on the um, more comprehensive characters. I think that's gonna, not going to be for another version, though. But uh, um, yeah, so that's kind of really? why. Yeah, you know, they've been talking about the three 360 character bodies, right? It's a little bit exciting. Yeah. <laughs> uh technology all right can't, can't stop it uh okay cool uh question from p vida yeah, i'm not going to attempt this one <laughs> how do i overlaw uh, overlay other drawings on the head of the head um, okay well Look, I don't know if this is answering the question or not. If you're talking about replacing the head of one character to another, I believe you can just save the head in Cartoon Animator and swap your heads over. Again, a process that I've never done because all my characters are standalone characters. But I see plenty of people who swap the heads on my characters that they buy and have different heads on different characters. But uh, as far as swapping the head in here in Coral Draw, um, I would just create, I would draw the head on another fresh page and then bring all the pieces over one by one and rebuild the head in here. That's how I would do it. Yeah, in case some of you guys didn't know that, you can actually just save the actual head of the character in Cartoon Animator as well. And, and you, you can, can do save some- the eyes and the mouth and the hands. And yeah, you can save all the individual parts. That's right. Yeah, and you can just uh, you know play Frankenstein and yeah. uh, swap things over this body for that head and all that kind of crazy stuff. The next um, question I answered. Oh yeah, that's the rope one again. Um, <laughs> uh, this is a good one. Sorry, go uh, So yeah, Mark is asking, how are you creating a pivot point in your SVG software and what tells CTA5 it's a pivot? Good question. Okay, You've, uh, at the start of the webinar, I said you've got three folders, right? RL bone human, RL bone head, RL image. Forget this one, your pivot points belong in these two. RL bone human has all the pivot points for the body and RL bone head, has all the pivot points for the face. If you wanted to add a new part or to create a new pivot point is so easy. Take the nose there, uh, copy, paste, and you'll see that here's our new one up here. And we're going to call that hat, okay? And then what you do is you create a hat and uh, like a sprite for the hat, and you'll put that in the RL image folder under the RL image head, because it's going to be part of the head, you'd put, you'd have the, the, the uh, folder there. And the first subfolder would be called normal with a colon and all your sprites would be in there. But once you've got the pivot point there, oh, sorry, I'll put that in the wrong spot too. Hey, no, in the head, that's right, it's in the head folder. Once you've got the hat there, you can make your pivot point any color that you want. You can move it to whatever spot you want. And when I've got a sprite, associated with that pivot point, it's going to rotate around that pivot point. And again, if you want to send me an email, Mark, I'll help you out in a bit more detail with that. And again, go back and go and read my tutorial. It covers that as well. Um, but yeah, you can you just add them in by just copying and pasting and just creating new pivot points. It's amazing the way the software just knows that if it's in that folder, it's a pivot point. Yeah, pretty cool. um, like, like Gary said, if, if it's in one of those RL bone folders, it, uh, it'll be a pivot point there. Um, yeah, she's she doesn't have multicolored acne or something like that. Oh, those actually those points actually print represent. Print <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let's go to the next one here. Another one from Kasimwana. Uh, that one's been answered. Oh, that's the same one. Okay, yeah. Um, ah, uh, this question it's from a Chinese. Yeah, how, how does how to set up the hair sprite look naturally? Okay, with your hair sprites. You got two options. You can you can easily just have a front hair sprite and a back hair sprite, so that you've just got two pieces, and then the head will move around. And when you set up your 360 head, that's going to move around. What I tend to do, you'll notice, is I'm going to move everybody around. Get rid of that. 
what uh, close the bones off. What I tend to do is I break up the hair into about all different parts. So Anita's actually got about eight different hair parts, right? And what I do that way when I'm setting up another, when I'm setting up the different angles, I can move each one of these individual hair parts around to suit the angle. So like if you have, for instance, if you pay attention to this little hair sprite here, right? As the hair moves down this way, it moves to that position. And as it moves up that way, it comes to that position. And you're layering the hair like a sandwich. So you've got five or six different layers and each of those layers moves around individually to create the effect of it being three-dimensional. Yeah, a lot of that, um, that in, in addition to the spring bones that you mentioned earlier on, on the hair, yeah. make it, you know, flap around naturally. Uh, this yeah. is obviously a way that you can, you know, make it look more natural when you rotate and stuff. So that's a good question. Um, let's go to the next one here from Chelsea. Uh, so I'm new to Cartoon Animator 5. I tried to add a sprite to one of the free actor characters to give the character a different outfit, but the sprite doesn't show up in the composer page. Is that normal? That's a weird one. I think you'll I think you'll find Chelsea that your problem is that we don't as yet have the pipeline between cartoon animator and being able to make the changes outside. I think that's what the problem. I'm guessing, but I think that's what the problem might be there. And and don't worry. I think that might get fixed up really, really, really quick, like very, very soon. I can't say anything, but really soon. Um, yeah, uh, what I would do, Chelsea, is to post that question on the Cartoon Animator Users Facebook group, because I'm on there as well, and we'll look into that for you and get you an answer. Yeah, I, I think the only way I can think of here that uh, just to kind of go off on a, a little bit here, yep. I think that if you, uh, you know, added an additional sprite in that body part uh, group in Photoshop, um, I think, yes. uh, or, or Illustrator or whatever, that should be fine. Like, say you have one one arm that's a, a short sleeve, one arm that's a long that's sleeve. Um, so, you should yeah, be able to do right. that. Yeah. So if you've got, yeah, you, if you've got your L arm there, you turn that off so you can see this part here, right? You've got your left arm there and you've got your normal folder here. Um, you could have two or three folders underneath it. Like I showed you with the shoes, you can have two or three folders underneath it. that are all different sprites. Um, or you could just replace the, all the sprites inside the normal folder with your own sprites. That's going to be possible when we get the pipeline going, which, as I said, is very shortly. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you can generally have as many uh, sprites in the library yeah. as you want under, under each, like, say, for le example, left arm, yep. you can have normal, you know, gray, you can have normal short sleeve. That's right. Uh, yeah, so it shouldn't be a problem if you just save it and update it. It'll just add, it, add the sprites to your... Yeah. Uh, sprite library and cartoon animator uh, yeah Chelsea, if you get stuck send me an email put it on the cartoon animator users facebook page we can resolve that one don't worry yeah it should be fine Maybe just uh, not sure why you might not be having that issue but um okay anyways we'll go to the next question from tracy here you just answered my question thanks gary you're welcome <laughs> look at you congratulations uh all right take praise, uh, well. take praise well <laughs> you see your head getting bigger i can't even see it's getting too big for the uh, webcam there uh all right a uh, question from tanya here uh when you create a new sprite say a character holding something should you import it as a prop or in the body part uh, okay if, you, if you're gonna have a character holding something that's a whole different ball game um don't do uh, personally i wouldn't do that in here what i would do is to create a separate sprite Say you want to be picking up a can of Coke, right? You create a separate sprite of the hand holding the Coke, and then you link it to the character's hand and make the original hand invisible. And I have videos of that on my YouTube channel. If you go and have a look at my video on introducing Jack Danger, there is a section in there where I cover how I put the gun in his hand. Um, and yeah, and so the, the hand and gun is a prop. And then you link that to the original hand, but you make the original hand invisible. And then you only see the hand with the gun and that will move along with the arm. So if you get stuck, give me a call, I'll send you the link. Jack Danger. Yeah, I love that name. That's, a, that's the coolest name character I came up with, Jack Danger. I love that guy. I thought it's pronounced Donger. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, that's I heard it's like, uh, it's, like, it's like Dutch for like prudence in financial matters or something no, like that. That's, that's his step. Donger. Right. Dog. <laughs> okay, yeah, his Dutch stepbrother there. Uh, yeah, it's all it's all about the magic sprite switching stuff, like Gary mentioned. It's a bit more detailed, but uh, yeah, oh, it's basically... back with the rope again. 
<laughs> so and it's not this that really wants to know about the rope. <laughs> and it's not this webinar. Put it on yeah. the cards and we made a Facebook page. We'll talk about ropes in another webinar. Uh, another and question. Uh, how do you change the layer when you make the animation? Um, mm -hmm. Want to demonstrate that, Gary? Yeah, this one's easy. This one's an easy one. Uh, when your character is animating, all you're doing is using, like say for instance, this character is running around on the screen. I won't go doing it now, but if that character is moving at any point on the timeline, open up your sprite editor, right? And then for any sprite that has multiple options to choose from, just click it and that sprite will change. And then you'll get a keyframe on your timeline that says that's the point at which it will change. And then it will stay that sprite until such times as you press another sprite and change it again. So. That's, that's all you gotta do. Same with the eyes, right? It's like we've got Anita's eyes there, but if I wanna change the sprite so that she blinks, I just click on the sprite, move forward on the keyframe, open it up on the timeline and then open it up again. So that's, yeah, that's easy. It's just a matter of going into your sprite editor and um, changing it. There you go. Yep, just make sure you're a different frame on the timeline and you're good to go. Yep. Um, question from Jeff, can only the face be a mask? To my knowledge, I think this is yes. I'm pretty sure the answer to this to you is yes. I would be very, very happy if I found out that I was wrong. I'd be very, very happy. But I think only the, the face itself can be a mask. You can't have like the ear be a mask. Well, they the have ear? masks on the eyes for the, um, yeah. the irises and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's sort of built in behind the scenes rather than actually in Cartoon Animator. That's something that you do in your SVG. Yeah, yeah. In the SVG, you can define the shape and the size of the mask for sure on Actually, the eyes, the head. Here's a question for you, Kai. Here's a question. And I don't know. For I don't me. Know if that makes sense. But you know how the eye has three layers and that has the, why don't we just pop over here? You know how the, the, the eye has, I'm going to test this, how the eye has three layers, right? Yeah. And one of them is a mask layer. What would happen if you took the brow and gave it an extra layer? And it was called, called mask. Called mask. Would that work? I've never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really wanted to mask an eyebrow before. So. Yeah, I mean, why don't you? What I'll be doing this afternoon. That's for sure. I wonder that's if that's what you got. You got to find out for us, Gary. You got to do that. Well, and you got to like post the post the results on the uh, Facebook uh, group you there. Think about it, right? As far as the computer software knows. It's not thinking about what it really is. It just knows that the left eye has normal iris, eye white, and mask. So what if you put a mask layer in the brow layer? Yeah, or I don't even know. I don't, I don't know if Cartoon Animator would recognize, because it's up to Cartoon Animator to recognize it as a mask. So I don't know if that's, that's programmed in for it to, to recognize it as a mask. I can we'll, imagine that it can possibly work. I just Give I it a shot, my man. Yeah, I can't <laughs> imagine. It, but that's a great question. That's a great question. And and not only is it a great question, but I'd love to see that be something that Cartoon Animator 6 could do, that you could mask any item. That would be really cool. You could mask anything. All right. A uh, question from Daniel is here. Is there a way to rotate the whole body using alternate sprites the same way you rotated the foot using okay. alternate sprites? Here's, here's the problem with that. If you use... Here we go. All right. If you were to put in a different body sprite, so you put in a second sprite here and it's back facing, for instance, right? You, you could do that and then you could swap, but you lose the ability to use your bones. Oops, her head's dropped in here. You would lose the ability to bend your character like the way she's bending there because the bones only work on the very first sprite. They won't work on the second sprite. Her body would remain rigid and stiff. So yes, you could certainly put different sprites in there, but I don't think it's going to rig properly because of the layering of the, the legs and all. You know, I suppose you could change the, the layering of the legs around and stuff. It would certainly, look, there are guys out there like Dirk. There are guys out there that would solve that, that would come up with a way of doing it. And again, the technical minded guys, you'd turn around and go, yeah, you can do that. And Dirk Baton, he'd do it. No problem at all. I would say you could do it, but it's going to be a pain because you're going to really limit your uh, functionality of the character. Yeah. What will happen in that case is the bone, the bone uh, position will remain stationary, but your sprite will be a different angle. Yeah. Um, so it might not animate properly, but oh, I mean, you can have as many as many midsection sprites or torso sprites as you want. Um, but the bone structure is going to remain the same. Like unfortunately, the bone structure doesn't switch when you switch the sprite. No, 
No, so they're sure. two separate systems. So that'll be, it might cause a little bit of an issue. Um, uh, so yeah, it won't be ac as accurate as if it's defined yeah. for one angle there. Uh, hopefully that's clear as mud. Um, let's go to the next question anyways from Tracy. Uh, is there a dedicated tutorial video on the timeline controls in depth? Yeah, there's plenty of them. Well, yeah, there are. There's a lot. And Kai's made a number of these. If you go to the YouTube um, uh, the YouTube channel, the official Reillusion YouTube channel, you'll find plenty of videos there. Uh, I've got a couple of videos on my Facebook page. Uh, I actually covered the timeline controls in the first webinar I did, the How to Start Your Animation Journey with Cartoon Animator. I covered the timeline controls there. Um, but uh, yeah, you'll, you, there are there are there are plenty of tutorials about on doing that. Definitely, yes. Okay, so we have our Reillusion Courses page, which I'm going to provide a link for in the chat window. Um, there's a number of tutorials um, involved here with character motions. So this is all the character animation and stuff. Uh, looks like there's about four, about twenty-five of them or something like that. Okay. Um, they all deal with the timeline because animation is uh, where you, the timeline is where you do the animation. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure which one's the most detailed uh, specifically for the timeline. You know um, what? I'm going to throw that in the chat window here for you here. Sorry. Sorry. Go. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Was, for for uh, Tracy there. Just, <laughs> right. What I was going to say was I'd have to give, I'd have to give a shout out here to, to David Arundel that has uh, a really good um, paid tutorial uh, series on uh, how to use Cartoon Animator. And I just know that he would cover that in depth. That's something that he would cover in depth. Yeah, timeline is getting, you know, um, more and more complex in Cartoon Animator. It used to be simple as pie, but uh, well, yeah, simple as pie. Hey. There we go. Yeah, I invented that. <laughs> but you know, you know what? The, I find now, I always say to people, try, trying to read the timeline in Cartoon Animator 5 is like trying to read the matrix. All of a sudden, <laughs> It's all these just dots going everywhere. And then one day you wake up and you read it like music and you go, oh, I can, I can, <laughs> and when I I can do Kung Fu. Or is it, I know yeah. Kung Fu, right? But when, yeah, that's what it's like. When I animate now, I can animate using the timeline where I just go, oh, well, that needs to be moved over here. And it's, it's like reading music. Yeah. <laughs> Be good at it. Practice. That's the only thing, practice. Absolutely. Uh, okay, we got a few more questions left. And I think we'll yeah. uh, end it off uh, pretty much on time here. We're doing uh, good. Question yeah, we are. Yeah. Question from Daryl. How do you save and then reload save settings on 360 head creator? Okay. That's pretty uh, simple, right? Go into composer mode. One second. It'll open up. There That's we go. definitely something you want to do is save your progress when you're yeah, working with the 360 head creator. We are. Uh, that's exactly right. What I, what I generally do is I'll set up, a, yeah, I'll set up an angle and then I'll go up and I'll save my default facial smooth angle data. And then I'll work on the next angle and then I'll go back and save it again. And then I'll work on the next angle and save it. And then at any point I can come back and load it and I'll get all those settings already set up for me. That way, if I go back to, uh, to Coral Draw and I decide that suddenly I want Anita wearing a hat and I go back and I make those changes in Coral Draw, I can always come back here and preload those settings and I don't have to go back and do it all again because you know what? I'm not real smart. And in the early days, I didn't know that existed. And I used to come back and I used to do it all again from scratch. And I and seriously, I put that down to the fact of why I can read characters so fast now is because I was reading the same character five, six times from scratch rather than once. So I learned to be just really, really fast at it because I was making myself constantly do it. And that's why I think I'm so fast at it. All right, we got a few more questions here. Um, one is from our friend Tanya here. She's asking, how do we save different parts in CTA 5? We talked earlier about the head and stuff. Do you want to show quickly how to do that? Yeah, yeah. Save if like you, head and eyes. Eyes. Uh, Where are we? Content. Content. If we've got the eyes there, say we want to save Anita's eyes, we just go to head, we go to eye, and then oh, I got to screw, move this on screen, and then hit save and call it whatever you want to save it and then hit enter, and that will save that set of eyes, which you can then apply to another character. But but if you do that, it does, it's not going to apply and move around on the head on the 360 head perfectly. You are gonna to have to go in and deform it and rig it for each angle. That's the only catch. Yeah, but basically all you're doing is just replacing the eyes, but you still need to do the 360 head Still gonna do yeah. the leg work, still gonna yep. do the leg. <laughs> all right, good question, Tanya. I told you this would be epic. Thank you, Tanya. Right. She did. 
She had all the faith in the world in me, Tonya. Excellent. Uh, question from David here. Uh, where can we get the updated PDF for rigging the character, Gary? That will be at the end of the webinar. But if you want to just send me an email uh, at garypie at reillusion.com, I will send it to you or go to my Facebook page. I'll send it to you. However you can find me in the world, I will send it to you. So this is your specific uh, yeah. white paper kind of PDF for, okay. Yeah. And you know what, you know what it was? And it, the reason that that white paper, the tutorial exists is because so many people were asking me questions and I kept mm -hmm. answering the same question over and over and over. So what I did was I sat down and when I created Anita, I sat down and just wrote the whole process out as I did each step. And then when I finished it, I went, oh, there's a tutorial. And then we got to here. So it worked out well. Um, I think we're, well, we're done. David, uh, Daryl says, thanks. Um, You're welcome, uh, Daryl. Daryl's a nice thanks, guy. Thanks, Daryl. Yeah, <laughs> awesome. A good guy. Right on. Um, so why don't we talk, I mean, we just mentioned the uh, character PDF you just mentioned here. Uh, where can people find that? Yeah, well, they're talking about adding it to the link at the end of the webinar. I know mm -hmm. Reillusion has just set it up as a PDF so that you'll be able to download it. So uh, I imagine once this webinar goes up to YouTube, that there'll be a link in the description there where you'll be able to go and download it, I think. But if anybody can't find it at any time, send me an email, garypie at reillusion.com, and that's G-A-R-R-Y-P-Y-E, and I will send it forward to you. All right, so our, our uh, Reillusion crew here actually just put a link in the chat window um, where okay. you can find the tutorial link. Um, cool. I'm not sure if that's the PDF white paper or not, but uh, I think when we, have, when we do um, publish this, Oh yeah, this is the white paper. Okay, this is the PDF. Yes. Good. Yeah. So in the chat window, guys, you want to check that out. That's where we put it. It'll probably be in the description as well um, for the yeah, YouTube it video. Goes, yeah. It goes into way more detail than I went into today. Today was a good way of actually, for those of you who learn better by seeing, which is me, than reading, then once you've got the white paper alongside of you and you read that and then watch me do it, you'll go, oh, okay, now I get it. Because sometimes when I read it and it says, click the button in the corner, I'm just clicking the wrong button and I'll click it for three days and go, it doesn't work. I'm useless at learning. So yeah, that, that paper will help. And yeah, I'm isn't, a that, terrible isn't that the definition of, in, definition of insanity is like doing yes, the same thing over and precisely. over again? I can't, look, I can't tell you the number of times in the early days where I'd click a button thinking it should do something and it wouldn't do it. So I would just keep clicking it. And I would just keep <laughs> clicking it and I destroyed many a keyboard. I, yeah, I'm not a good learner. I'm a terrible learner. That's why I said, and I mean it, if I can do this process, if I can learn to do this, everybody watching this webinar today can learn this process because I am the worst student in the world. <laughs> uh, come on, Gary. We all know no, you're really well, you a know genius. That. You, know, you know that from 10 years ago. You'd tell me something. <laughs> later on, I still don't get it. I can't do it. No, we no, all have our days. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, mine, mine are in the higher numbers, believe me. <laughs> uh, well, we got through it all again. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're done. We, we don't have any more questions. Um, so, that yeah, well. that's awesome. Uh, we're right on time, basically. Um, just a quick reminder to everyone again. Um, again, fill out the survey. Uh, get the forty percent discount for Gary's content from the content store. Uh, the ten percent discount, general discount from the content store. We'll also be sending right. that out uh yep yeah, uh fill out the um or sorry check out the content store for all the you know weekly specials and yada yada yeah. um i think that is pretty much it i don't really need to go into much else um everyone thank you so much for being with thank us today that was wherever awesome. you are in the world and a uh, big thank you to uh gary um, representing uh australia very well yep. bouncing around like a kangaroo and let's and, know what uh, you want to see in the next <laughs> webinar Put your votes out there. Tell me what else you want to see. And I'll go to Reillusion and see if they'll let me do this again. Gary dancing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, awesome. Thanks so much again, Gary. Uh, thanks, thanks, everyone. Guys. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. And uh, we will uh, see you uh, in the next webinar.